Today's episode is all about the Russian military's 12.7 mm Dishka machine gun. It's almost as much fun to shoot as it is to say. From what I'm told, that nickname Dushka actually means beloved person in Russian. So the Americans with their Ma Deuce and the Russians with their Dushka both have a cute nickname for their lethal world ending 50 caliber machine guns. That's adorable. If you've ever seen an 06 Toyota Camry tearing down the highway with a machine gun duct taped on top of it, odds are that was a Dushka. Also, you should probably move somewhere safer. It's like the Soviet version of apple pie and baseball. The Dushka is as Russian as it comes. It's often compared to the US Army's M250 cal because of their similar calibers, but the ways in which these weapons have been used and their performance on the battlefield could not be more different. So what made the Dushka so successful in its early years? How does it compare to the American M250 cal mod deuce? And why did the Russian military decide to replace it? Well, the Dushka is 74 pounds, which is 10 pounds lighter than its competition. It fires the massive 12.7 by 108 mm cartridge, which is actually 10% bigger than the American 50 BMG. That is a thick round with two Cs. But the trade-off there is that the extra size of the round and the decreased weight of the overall system is felt during operation. Users report it having a much higher amount of recoil. It fires at a respectable 600 rounds per minute, with a muzzle velocity at 2,800 feet per second and an effective range of 2,000 meters. The Dishka's main role on the battlefield is to take out targets that are hiding behind buildings, concrete walls. It's meant to hit those slow flying airplanes and helicopters and lightly armored vehicles. It's the answer to that question, yeah, uh, yeah, but can we make it bigger? The origins of this category of full sender started with its development when the Germans were the first to develop a large caliber bullet designed to penetrate tanks, early tanks. But this early cartridge lacked the energy that was necessary to cycle a machine gun. John Browning helped develop a similar caliber anti-vehicle cartridge, and then he went ahead and modified an existing design for his 30 caliber machine gun to fire it, which would go on to become the infamous M250 cal. It's unclear which bullet the Soviet army based its design off of, but by 1934, Russia had its own large caliber 12.7 mm anti-tank cartridge. 1938 coincided with a rapid evolution of military technology that was happening at the time. We had the rise of tanks and airplanes, and us little guys on the ground needed a new sort of weapon to defend against these new threats. Sure, we had light machine guns, and even machine guns on tripods, but none of those calibers in the infantry's arsenal were even close to, are you fucking kidding me size? After eyeing the sweet new American M250 cal, the Soviet army made an official request for one of their own in 1920s. When the Soviet army officially requests something, you might want to consider doing it. The first iteration of the new Soviet machine gun was developed by Vasily Dekhtimirov. This is the guy to know about in Russian firearms development. He's often overlooked in favor of Kalashnikov, but this dude was just as influential in the firearms world. He was born in 1880, worked at the Russia Tola arms plant. Over his lifetime, he helped develop over 84 different firearms. He has monuments of him all over Russia, and he's seen as a hero there. Vasily Degtryov had already developed the DP-27 at this point, and the new gun would essentially be an upscale version of that. It was called the DK, and originally it used a revolving feeding mechanism and a small 30 round drum magazine. So the DK had some problems, like it had a really slow rate of fire at 360 rounds per minute. That was too slow to be effective against aircraft. So a fellow firearms developer named Georgi Shepneyev, which I'm sure I said that wrong, went ahead and helped redesign the feed mechanism. It would now use a traditional belt of ammunition, and this gave it the increased rate of fire that was needed. Listen, I get it. When you're as bad of a shot as I am, you need that high rate of fire to make up for it. It's not my fault I can't aim, I'm left eye dominant. So this change to the feed mechanism dramatically increased reliability, and is one of the main reasons that the Dishka heavy machine gun is still being used around the world. They just simply do not stop working under any conditions. If you take anything away from this video, please just remember that Dishka is known around the world for its unbeatable reliability. This new and improved machine gun was named the Dishka and was adopted in 1938, just before the start of World War II. From what I found, the Dishka had a production run of only about 8 to 9,000 during the war. But there was still another problem that needed solving. As soon as the Soviets developed a machine gun that could take out tanks, basically every army fielded tanks that had upgraded armor that could defeat the 50 caliber bullet. The machine gun was already obsolete in its intended role before it ever even saw combat. But did the Dushka choose to fade away into obscurity? No. It saw extensive use in World War II as an anti-aircraft weapon. 
and less commonly on the ground against light vehicles, buildings, and infantry. In 1946, an improved version of the Dishka started to be issued to troops, and it's called the Dishka M, the M meaning modernized. It had a detachable collimated targeting piece that could be used for targeting aircraft. These two side-by-side -side spider web ring sights help give the operator reference points when leading fast-moving targets. One of the most distinguishing features of this weapon is the barrel of the gun. It has a very distinctive circular ribbing. This is known as the ventral fins, which have the purpose of helping cool the weapon during sustained fire. The M version added removable and adjustable shoulder pads to help mitigate that recoil. Total production run of the Dishka machine gun is estimated to be 1 million units. Congratulations to the Dishka for going platinum. I knew you could do it. I was there from the start, man. I was there right alongside you. So during the Cold War, the Soviet Union was handing out a ton of these weapons to anyone with a revolution in their heart and a warm pulse. You get a Dishka, you get a Dishka, everyone gets a Dishka. Since so many of them were in circulation, it wasn't uncommon to see them fall into the hands of many of the United States adversaries. Tactics had started to evolve with many developing armies mounting Dishkas to old pickup trucks. The army even came up with an entirely new term to refer to these makeshift vehicles, technicals, which is the third world version of putting rims on your tires. Most of you probably remember first hearing about the term in the movie Black Hawk Down. Having the ability to mount this thing to a four cylinder car is where being lighter than the M250 cal comes in handy. You'll often see the top torn off a truck and one of these bolted on. It looks ridiculous at first, but these are actually a pretty incredible weapon because you can have a lot of them and they can move fast as heck. In fact, of the 5,000 US military helicopters that were shot down over Vietnam, the vast majority of those incidents were from ground fire from the Dushka, not enemy aircraft or anti-air missiles. The other reason you see these things slapped onto everything is because they cost a lot less to produce. Now I looked all over the internet trying to find the exact figures of the cost, but from what I could find, it seems like the M250 Cal costs around 14,000 each, and from what I read, the Dishkas only cost about 2,500 to produce. Even if those numbers aren't exactly right, it's a massive gap considering they have a very similar performance. But one of the most notorious uses of the Dishka was in 1988, which shows how effective a small number of these things can be. During the conflict in Northern Ireland, two Dishkas were smuggled in from Libya and were able to shoot down a British Army Lynx helicopter. So by the 1970s, the Dishka was really showing its age. Troops were complaining about the recoil and they felt it was too heavy. The Soviet Army decided to adapt the NSV, which was 20 pounds lighter in weight and had a much higher rate of fire, it was more controllable. When the Soviet Union broke up the ban in 1991, they lost their license to manufacture the NSV. So to restart production of a 50 caliber machine gun, they came up with the Cord Heavy Machine Gun. Now the Cord, K-O-R-D, is more accurate, the recoil is so well controlled that it can be fired from a deployable bipod in the same way as a light machine gun. Truly an upgrade there. Tip of the cap to the Russians and their cord. Why can't the American military come up with a fancy new lightweight 50 cal? The Dishka has had a good run, and it looks to be far from over thanks to its reliability and its low cost. It's still in use as the primary weapon in over 40 countries around the world, so ubiquitous that it ends up fighting itself often. In spite of its flaws, I still love it, and accept it as my favorite machine gun. The weapon was first produced in the 1930s and is still being manufactured in China, Pakistan, Romania. This machine gun has been around for almost 100 years and we're likely to see the Dishka being used for another 100 years. What do you think about the Dishka? Do you think it could be improved? Do you have any experience using one? Let us know in the comments section. Check out another video if you like getting your defense information from some guy in his sweatpants. You're watching Task and Purpose. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy.